Hi, this is William Letterer, Executive Director at the Chocolate Church Arts Center. Thank you so much for tuning in to our first episode of our series, Art for Good, in which uh, we are going to spend some time with artists and organizations who share our belief that the arts can be used to truly make the world a better place. Um, Before we start, I would just like to take a second to thank David Matero Architecture for sponsoring the series. And I'd also just like to thank our members, our donors, our volunteers, everyone who has uh, contributed to help support uh, the Chocolate Church Arts Center. We could not do this without you, so thank you very much. Um, So for this very first episode, we are going to spend some time with Jamie Silvestri and Bailey Knox from Artvan, which is a mobile organization that uh, helps provide therapeutic arts to youth and communities in our region. They also have one of the coolest vans that I have ever seen. Um, So I'd like to just encourage you while you're watching, um, reach out with your questions. Please check out their website, their social media, as well as ours. Um, And feel free to to submit any questions you might have for us or for them, and and we'll be glad to to get back to you. Um, Please also check out our website for details on uh, other episodes that are coming up in this series and uh, for details on other programming we have coming up. There's a lot of it, and it's a lot of good stuff. Um, So thanks again. And uh, with that, please enjoy episode one of this series with Art Van. Hi, I'm Jamie Silvestri, I'm an expressive therapist and director and founder of Art Fan, a mobile art therapy organization that serves under-resourced youth in eight neighborhoods for communities. And it's been 16 years going, rolling. I'm Bailey Knox um, and I am working as an expressive arts therapist with Jamie. So I do a lot of the work, um, the direct service work with the kids for Art Fan. This is our van. <laughs> yes, there's more to us than just this amazing art. <laughs> Making here, so we do these art bags um, right now during COVID, which we've been doing for the past year since April of last year, um, and distributing these every other week to our core neighborhoods. Um, and I'll mention those real quick. Our neighborhoods for Art Fan are Bath, which is our home base here, Maritime Apartments in Hyde Park, Brunswick, Perryman Village, Lewiston, Lewiston Public Library, Auburn, Family Development, Broadview Acres, and Lincoln School. And then down in Biddeford, we're at Bacon Street. And these are our core neighborhoods that we've been servicing for 16 years at no cost to these families and these kids. So deep work, building relationships. We miss seeing the kids. But this has been a way that we stay connected and it's important to, to have some consistency, especially during our very inconsistent times mm-hmm. recently. <laughs> so Bailey, yeah. go for it. So, so in every guy we have a project list. Um, these are just ideas of how the kids can use the materials. Um, as we have really encouraged the kids to use the materials in any way that they want. So these are suggestions in case parents are kind of reading along with them. Um, but by no means do they have to do any of these. And then we have uh, a different kid create a coloring page every other week for these. Um, and this one is Aurora from Biddeford. <laughs> and so this week's art bag, we have a collection of paper. Uh, the white paper is watercolor paper kind of gives away some other stuff that's in this bag. And we have some other colorful paper that we can use for drawing on. Paintbrush, and watercolor paper. Um, oil pastels. I can't open this for you. Yeah. They're brand new. And watercolor, little palette. Yep, they're both brand new. Donated to us by the amazing <laughs> Big Al and Miss Gasset. <laughs> And so in between um, our distribution weeks, we film a demo, which is much like uh, what I'm doing now, and we put it on our YouTube channel, um, just showing the kids how to use the materials. So one of the projects we have on our list this week is just to create um, a swirl drawing and to pick different colors to fill in the spaces. Draw a swirl. And we had some ideas on the list this week about listening to a favorite song and creating your shape based on the way the song makes you feel or the melodies make you feel. So that's definitely an option with us too. Um, And then 
You'll need a little cup of water for your watercolor paints. Not included in the bag. Not included, you'll have to get that at your house. <laughs> Just, we kind of call this waking the paints up, which I really like. So they're sleeping right now, they're really dry. And we want to rub them with water. Got to get them really wet at the very beginning, especially when they're brand new. And then we can just use them to fill in different spaces. Or I'm going to use a little darker color so they can see the resist. So if I go over here, see how if I paint over, the yellow. Oh, so cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love crayon resist. Me too. <laughs> you can write with white and make magic words come up. Oh, yeah. It's so cool. So, most of our projects this week, um, well, all of them are with the oil pastels and the watercolors. Um, the kids are encouraged to use, you can use one or the other, whatever they like. Um, we also have a couple projects this week where they work with friends, if they can, um, where I would do a little piece and then I'd give it to Jamie and she would add a little bit and we'd go back and forth. And those are projects that I really like to do with the kids too. Yeah, we try to get them to be, especially now because things are so tight with rules, to even through our small little art bags and materials to, to expand, to feel some freedom, to play, to explore. Yeah. You know, be kids on paper safely. <laughs> so if you had a tough day at work, or yeah. school, <laughs> or at home, and you need to just like release a little, mm -hmm. you, know, um, you can go down with those water oil pastels and smudge and smear and make sounds. <laughs> That's always fun too. Because sometimes our feelings don't feel great mm -hmm. or look great on paper if we want a beautiful picture is the attention, but we're feeling a little angry or disappointed or sad, and the art looks that way, that's okay, right? Yeah. It's totally cool. If yeah. I want to tear it up, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wrinkle it up, throw it in the fire, <laughs> um, turn it into an airplane. Um, what we encourage, uh, it's better to do it there on paper or sculpture, when we do sculptural materials and projects or clay than um, to ourselves and bring any harm to ourselves or anybody else. And so all art is acceptable and okay and the feelings of sadness and disappointment and anger. So it's, it's kind of a, or it is a process of reintegrating those angry feelings and moving through them and going into a place of more joy or more um, peace and calmness. Mm -hmm. And making art is calming. So that's just a little art therapy piece in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And it's fun. Yes, absolutely. We love talking about art therapy. Yeah. So <laughs> we are art therapists and we both bring clinical experiences prior to art fan. So um, I worked in institutional settings, more diagnostic settings, both mostly with children, adolescents, and some adults, done some outpatient work and um, some private practice and worked in schools, worked with different agencies, people living with AIDS, people living with Alzheimer's as a private consultant, um, and then started Art Van. So I bring those experiences that were more clinically based to clinical, when I say clinically based, my training, our training is the same as any psychotherapist. However, what we do, we were both um, graduates of Leslie, College um, in Massachusetts in their expressive arts therapy program, and we we incorporate the creative process. So I guess I'll just jump on what Jamie said, and I think there it's important to highlight the difference between um, the clinical work and the work we do. I think there's a you can use art therapy in a really broad um, a broad way. So the community art is a little bit more about, or I feel like it's a little bit more about working with a population that. Um, because they're because it's a low socioeconomic population, because there's a lot of transients, because it's isolated. Um, it just is a group of kids that, by virtue of where they were born and where they are right now, um, is more predisposed to mental health issues down the road. So what we are trying to do is more preventative care versus like a clinical therapeutic approach where you're addressing diagnoses or addressing goals. Um, after you know something has already come up for the kids. So we're building um, 
the things that I think are really important, we're, we're building resilience in these kids with um, creative problem solving skills, social skills, um, interaction with their community. Um, I think us showing up every week is, is a message that they're valued in the community, that other people outside of their families value them and want to work with them. Um, and, and I think it's a way of approaching art therapy that, that really doesn't happen very often. Um, most art therapists are in private practice or um, more clinical settings. Right, so we don't seek diagnosis, we don't diagnose or label, and we see every youth that walks through the door or shows up when we're outside uh, to join us in our art therapy session uh, with full potential with love as another human being figuring out this human life like the rest of us. And every week we design a project, like you mm -hmm. saw with the art bag, um, to emphasize what might be going on that week, globally, personally, in the neighborhood, what we might be um, learning about, and we keep it general so that the themes can uh, go between a, a three-year-old to a 17-year-old, and there's lots of room for them to uh, express themselves within that theme based on their authenticity and their uniqueness and their needs. So then we'll collect materials based on that theme and load them in a tote and load them in the van and go to, every day to the same neighborhoods each week and show up 90 minutes at after school or programs and two hours during the summer. So it's 44 weeks out of a, out of a year that we um, reach out, we do a check-in. And yeah. this check-in is really important. Yeah. Name and some creative share. But what Bailey and I'll do is, that's an opportunity for us to quickly assess how many kids are here, what's the age, average age range, what's the energy level. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the share may be like name and favorite color, or we can get a little deeper name and what brings you joy, um, what made you sad today, you know, something depending on what we feel is um, potential for there. And then they do, we do the art demo. Yeah. And go from there. So and we co-facilitate, so we're both group process therapists, so there's a whole other dynamic there, based different than a one-to-one, -one, which is typical in a private practice setting. So we're, we're looking at the group, having the group take ownership and support one another um, around what their challenges are, what their issues are. And we, we just kind of hold the space, create a safe space, build some trust, it's very relational. And then, you know, something cathartic may show up and we move with that. Otherwise, you know, we'll just, they're the lead. It's very child-centered. So, We've designed this COVID model, um, <laughs> art bags, and when in person, we're outdoors and we set up with a distance and masks and wash stations. Um, and so it's, it's very uh, adaptive to CDC mandates. And then uh, pre-COVID, we would sit all together in a circle on a tarp or around a table. Uh, and so we've developed these formats and we are not sure what the summer, probably definitely outdoors, yeah. whether we need the distance, we don't know yet, um, and or what the fall will bring. So we're, we're pretty creative thinkers here and we are able to flex between these two formats um, or one or the other or come up with something different. But what we will do is still come every week. Uh, the future for our band. Yeah, hopefully back to our, <laughs> our groups, our right. groups together, and hopefully we'll be able to, to work indoors again. Um, yeah. I'm crossing my fingers as soon as possible. I miss um, being with kids. But, also, I think just to speak real brief to our future is um, we are small but powerful. Um, there's only three staff, and there's myself, Bailey, and Shannon Ells, who's our Director of Development and Communications, and she's amazing and fantastic working behind the scenes. A fabulous eight-member board and another ripple of volunteers and advisors. And without this, this support, our family wouldn't happen. Um, so we also try not to expand too much, um, you know, in, in moving beyond our scope of neighborhoods. We, we really believe in 
deepening the work and the relationships and because that's when the healing happens. So we're, we're not trying to bigger. People say, oh, you're gonna go here or go there. Well, we could, but developing that um, would, would take away from the other neighborhoods. There's only five days of the week and five after school days. And we, we just, yeah. it's just not gonna happen. Um, but the core neighborhoods are pretty stable and secure. And we are trying as an organization to look toward that like succession planning and how to secure our mission always um, as, as, as our focal point and, and how to you know, now look towards the future and how to secure that in a way that Art Van can remain Art Van rolling forward. Um, and so we're all still here and working and have jobs and um, doing pretty creative things. So that's how we hope to continue it. Do any other challenges that show up? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, website is www.artfanprogram.org, one word. And we have a Facebook page and Instagram. YouTube. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. See our yeah. YouTube, YouTube videos. Alien. Yeah, I yeah. can do a demo every other week. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Talk Church. Woo! <laughs> Yay, supporting the arts, supporting the arts. <laughs>